Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. Make sure to check in the description notes below my video where you will find links to all of my online shenanigans, including how to get my patterns to knit up for yourself, how to join the Watch Barbara Knit Facebook group, how to support me on Patreon, and how to get my merchandise. Now today, we're not talking about knitting at all. <laughs> I warned y'all that I was getting into a a uh, new hobby, well, revisiting an older hobby, something I enjoy, you know, I knit and I turned my knitting into my job. So I found I needed a, another outlet for just random creativeness and I took up embroidery. And when the opportunity came to try out a product from a embroidery designer of another fiber artist, I thought that would be super fun. Now, part of my whole thing about this channel is that I want to uplift other independent artisans, fiber artists, who are trying to make a go of this because really it's hard to get seen. It's hard to get your stuff seen. And when I find stuff that I think is cool, I want to share it with y'all. So I had this opportunity to play with some embroidery stuff. So I thought, why not? Now, the name of this particular creative is M Creative J. I will put a link to their website in the description notes below. And this individual sells embroidery stuff. And specifically what I got were these peel, stick and stitch embroidery patterns. We're gonna have some up close so you can take a look at them. I will put a timestamp right here so that if you wanna jump ahead to watching me open this up and play with them and then embroider on them, you can jump ahead. But let's hop over to the website and take a look at what this fiber artist offers. So we've got botanical fiber art, materials for the modern maker, a pattern club, offers a workshop, all kinds of stitchy things. So it is really, really cool. Then their name is Melissa, that's nice to know. And it's just super fun stuff. Look at all this, look at that, that's cute. Now, what I'm specifically doing is let's see here home shop oh there we go here's the shop and let's go to the catalog and this is what i got okay so we have beginner kits intermediate kits advanced kits Ooh, what does advanced look like oh my goodness i can want that is really cool that's like a terrarium I can totally see that these are advanced and it looks like these kits come with like a whole bunch of stuff in them. I am not advanced. I'm not advanced. Uh, I got the stick and stitch. And I do wanna make it clear that this is my hobby. Uh, I am not like the go-to. If you want like embroidery tutorials and things like that, I am not the go-to on that. But if you want to follow along and have fun with me, you can, that's where I am right now. So these are the stick and stitch patterns and we've got mushrooms and landscapes and wildflowers, florals, cacti. Let's look at the cacti because I did not get the cacti. So here we go, super fun. And so that is what we are talking about. We are talking about a way to add embellishments to like your existing stuff or to compose something completely from scratch in a hoop. It, I really am intrigued by it. And since I've been playing with it, love the, that it's not just, you know, here's the design. It gives you a little room for creativity, but it's more you're moving blocks around than trying to dream it up straight from your brain. Cause sometimes my brain doesn't have that in it. So we are going to get into the details. I'm gonna go to a thing that you, so you can see my hands and you can see me playing with this, what a peel stick and stitch product. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with it. Let's take a look at what I got from M Creative J. So here's my little puffy pouch. 
pull things out. Now this is not an unboxing. I've already opened this up and taken a look at it. Just a good, a good idea, but we're gonna go through it together. I got this little note. Uh, have fun slowing down and creating with this whimsical and vibrant embroidery. All you need is patience and love of craft. Uh, I got the love of craft. Mm, I'm a little short on patience. Uh, so she's got stitch videos on the website, tutorials, projects, inspiration, all kinds of fun stuff. Okay, and she wrote me a nice note. So here we go. I got three packs and again, she sent these to me for review and I really appreciate her sending, but I wanna make it clear that these were sent to me uh, gratis. So I'm very excited about the mushrooms. And then I believe this is the winter botanical set. So this is just like greenery. And then these are I believe the wildflower ones, I'll have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure it's wildflower. So let's look at the mushrooms. They come in obviously this little thing. This is resealable because I have opened this up once before. We're going to dump them out. Oh, get out of there. Here we go. Here are the instructions. Patterns are pre-printed on water-soluble stabilizer. Simply choose your design, peel off the backing, place it sticky side down on your fabric, and then stitch. When finished, wash away the stabilizer with warm water. We'll try to get video on each of those steps. Let's see what we have. We've got a nice little card, and then we got the mushrooms. So we have all kinds of fun mushrooms. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different patterns. I love these little Anoki group ones. This one's super cute. Very, very excited about mushrooms. Okay, let's scooch the mushrooms over. This, I believe, is the winter botanical one. Same kind of packaging. Same kind of dumpy dumpy card and we've got yes this is winter because we've got like the little holly and some evergreen pieces i really like this one this one is going to be fun i think i might play with that one these are almost feathery but i'm sure it's supposed to be evergreen holly mistletoe i bet this is mistletoe so we've got that for greenery Let me scooch those over here bring my mushrooms down here so you can still see them. And then we have wildflowers. You got, y'all know opening's not like necessarily my strong suit. Let's dump these y'all out. Oop, get, 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 there we go. Get the card out of the way. Let's see what we got. Got a pretty leaf. Oh! I love pansies. This one has, again, one of these guys, but a different variant. Love that one. Like a Gerbera daisy. That's a holly hockey kind of, but again, these are wildflowers, so probably, unless, I'm sure there weren't. And there's a, a cone flower, very cool. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one has nine in it. How many did this one have? One, one, two, three, four, five, six. So they have different numbers, but they're all very, very cool. Unless I missed some. Nope. They're just really cool. Look at these. So the idea is you peel and stick them onto whatever it is you're going to embroider. Then you embroider through them and then you use warm water and the backing. This is like stabilizer. Remember the fusible stabilizer that you iron on, but way easier. So this is what we have now. One thing I was planning on embroidering on, this has been stuck for me. I have been creatively stuck on this particular project. If you go back to some of my videos, this, this is a piece, this is an art piece where I printed this with a gel plate. It's a gel print and 
I've done three of them. This is the fourth one. And before I allow myself to do any more prints, I want to finish this one. I tried it to make myself focus a little bit. So I've been stuck because this one, the other ones had like more uh, going on. This one is just like a blank background. That's a beautiful texture. I did this, which I enjoyed, but I've been stuck for what to do here. And I, what I've decided is I'm, because in the other ones, like I highlight different elements, but this is really just a backdrop. So I've decided I want to use these stickies on this. So let's see. I like the mushrooms, but I really don't want to get too literal with it. I love this. Ooh. I like that. I like that there. Does it want to be there or does it want to be more at an angle? This is fantastic that I have this here and I can play with the placement of it and decide how I want it to interact with the background. This is fantastic because I can see it and it helps me visualize better. I sort of like it where I first put it, but then I kind of like it here too. I like it here, then maybe with the mushrooms down here. What do y'all think? Up a little bit higher. Actually, you know what? I do like it when things go off the side. Hmm. Up higher. This is my process, people. <laughs> don't always know. I don't always know what I'm doing coming into things. I think I really like these mushrooms right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, let's see what we got. We have a paper back and it's peel and stick. My fingernails I had to take my glasses off. That is a problem with my glasses, not this product. Let's get the peel and stick. So this fabric has to be fairly thin because we're going to embroider through it. So there we go. It peeled off. Sticky side down. Where were we going to put this? Right there. and stuck. There we go. And you can see how thin it is. Oop, I love it there. This, y'all, I'm going to move here. We're going to put this right here to remind me where I was putting that. And I'm going to put this little peel off right there so I can get it in roughly the same spot. So what I'm finding I'm having to do is just kind of crumple it a little bit to get it to peel off. I was putting it right there to there. There we go. So that is another one. Now I can see how it would be super easy to go a little um, overboard sticking these on. Or if you're going for that really overloaded look, you would definitely be awesome to just chunk them all on. But I'm gonna stop with just these two so I can work on them and show them to y'all. And I have one other piece that I thought would be fun. And that is, let me get this under here. Ha <laughs> ha, my butt, <laughs> not my butt, the back of my pants. So these are some kinda, really, it's almost the only pair of jeans I own. I'm not much on jeans, but I, it could be fun. And people really like doing like embroidery on jeans. So here is my jeans pocket. So what should we do on, so I used 
the one from the winter. I, so this is from the winter and this is from the mushroom. So let's do flowers. We've got an assortment of flowers. We're going to go no for that. I don't know. Gerbera, big old puffy one. No, pansy, no. This could be great. Or I'm going to keep it towards the top because getting the embroidery down in here is going to be rough. I don't think I need this leaf or that. I mean, that could be cool. Mm, I kind of like that. I think that's too much for me right now. We've got, what do we like? It is surprising to me, but I think I really like this. I think it might be upside down. I don't know. This could be that these are the petals and this is like the center, but I'm thinking of this as like the stem. No, that is the center. I, I think I'm looking at this wrong. I think it's a like this. Mm, I no longer like that as much for this purpose. Maybe just a nice big flower. Mm, no, I am torn. I really like this. Ooh, what do you all think of that? Just across the top? I think I like that. I'm gonna check where my edges are and maybe bring it in a little bit. Or here. You know what? <laughs> so many ways that this could be accomplished, but maybe just centered? No, I now don't like this. See, this might get edited down because this, this is a process. This is totally a process. Okay, that's definitely a stem, which makes me come back to this maybe being a stem. I'm gonna call this the stem, and this is, and I really like that there. That That is what I like. I think that's where I'm going. You know, mind changing. So this paper that the stabilizer is super thin, so getting it apart is a little rough. So what I'm doing is kind of, as I said, crumpling it until I get it to peel off. And then it, it comes up super easy. Now I'm gonna position this. Gotta make sure I get away from these edges. Right. I like it. Okay, now I've got some embroidery to do. I've not tried to uh, record myself embroidering at all, but here's what we've got, you can see I'm working on this stem and I am using backstitch. Backstitch is one of my favorite stitches to use. Now what I need to do is go in through this hole and typically when I do backstitch back I'm just gonna push it up and then like come up here someplace and you can do that but I'm finding it harder to do. So see you can see I went in here and then I go past where here. See, and I'm still off a little bit. So again, I am not a professional embroidery type person. See, so I just, I'm finding that technique a little bit more difficult with this interfacing, but it's no big deal. Instead of doing that, I just do the whole poke it all the way through. And then I'm gonna go up along the stem and you can see, pull my needle through. Let me check the back. Did I make a mess? Mildly. Again, I do this for fun. <laughs> so, and then we're gonna go back down in that hole. So I'm going like halfway back each time. I think that's why it's called the back stitch. Pull that through, and then we're gonna go do, 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 here. See, that stitch was too short, but I don't worry about it. If you're the kind of person who relies on getting your stitches the same size by sort of 
counting the fibers, like your warp and your weft, this is going to interfere with that because you really can't see. And, and like I can't see how it's interacting with the background, which is what I do a lot when my freeform embroidery. So this is definitely like an overlay technique but I think that's cool and it's fun to do something different and I think it's going to look really cool when I'm done. So back in. So as you can see, it really is no different than regular embroidery. Yes, there's a little bit more force needed to push it through because you're just essentially going through a second layer of fabric. And the other thing is, is yes, the needle does get a little bit sticky. It gets a little bit of that adhesive on it, but nothing that's annoying. I mean, nothing that is a problem. You just might have to wipe it off every once in a while. And that's, you know, to be expected because it's going through an adhesive. Now, what am I gonna do here? I think I'm gonna put this right there and I'm just gonna do a little tiny short stitch because as you can see, this kind of goes off at an angle. So I'm doing a little tiny short stitch. I'm going to go along to here and that's way too big of a stitch but you know what as I said this is my fun me time this is my fun hobby time so I need to tighten my hoop up just a little bit more Really, that's it. It's just exactly like any other form of embroidery, except for you get to follow along on a line, which is great. I recorded this video in my kitchen, and now I am dubbing over it because my birds were like super loud. So I have some water. It is lukewarm, and here is the little embroidery that I did. I decided to leave it empty in the middle because I can always, you know, go over it. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it in the lukewarm water, and you can see it's already starting to get a little bit clearer. And then I just started rubbing it because I was trying to accelerate the process because y'all don't want to watch this, but you can see it breaking up almost immediately. Now the paper is definitely breaking up quicker than the adhesive behind it. So rubbing it a little bit more, again, it's a little bit sticky, but it is definitely coming up. This is what my little embroidery looks like with the interfacing completely washed away. It's still damp, but you can see, I think it looks pretty cool. I decided to not completely like do all the embroidery over the interfacing because if I continue, I'm just gonna like fill in these middle parts. So I already have this outline here and I think it looks pretty fun. Now, is it perfect? No, it's definitely not perfect, but I think it looks pretty cool. And, you know, if anyone is close enough to where this is located on my body, which this is the back pocket, to notice that it's not perfect, um, if I let them that close, they probably know me well enough to not really say anything about it. So that is how these peel and stick and stitch patches things decals, whatever you want to call them, work. Make sure you go to the link in my description notes and click so that she knows I've sent you over there. Or if you decide to grab something, if you have like in the notes when you order, tell her that you saw it on Watch Barbara Knit so that she knows, you know, <laughs> that knitters like to embroider too. I hope that walking through this product with me has given you a better idea of how it works and if it's something that you might want to play with 
as I said, I really like, and you saw me being able to put the pieces down and move them around and compose myself with them as opposed to just a set design. Now, I can also see how well following a set design is super fun, but sometimes trying to come up with it out of my own brain from scratch is just more thinking that I want to put into it because I embroider for relaxation and fun. I can definitely see myself playing with these some more. I'm going to continue on the pieces that I started that you saw here. If you wanna see more progress on them, please let me know, I can make more videos videos. I can make them in addition to as opposed to not instead of, you know, I might end up with more videos per week if there's enough interest in the embroidery because I don't want the embroidery to in any way, you know, <laughs> get in the way of the knitting because I know that's why y'all are here. And also, if we're not going to do a whole lot more videos, definitely follow me on Instagram. I will post about doing all of this embroidery on Instagram and you can see still photos and maybe some reels. It'll be a lot of fun. So if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.